500 subscribers means a little celebration is in order. So I went looking for three things in our world related to the number 500. This is a special episode of Oddworld. You may be familiar with Mexico City's Aztec predecessor, Tenochtitlan, or the ancient city of Teotihuacan. But are you familiar with the much older site of Monte Alban? Founded around the year 500 BC, at a good 1940 meters above sea level, situated on a hilltop in Oaxaca City, Monte Alban was built in the middle of a valley, making it easily defensible. It was one of the first cities of Mesoamerica and important for about a thousand years. The three hilltops in the middle of the valley, Chico, El Gallo and Atzompa, were eventually connected by bridges. Monte Alban was important to at least three subsequent cultures, each leaving behind evidence through their art and engineering found at the site. The Zapotec were the last occupants, forced out probably by the Aztec. The city was abandoned but remained a burial site until the fall of the Aztec Empire in 1521. The inner German border fortifications between East and West Germany were at least 500 meters wide. Although you could make the argument the border was 5 kilometers wide, or 5,000 meters, because of the Sperrzone. Within 5 kilometers from the border, all inhabitants on the communist East German side had to have special permits to work and live there. Only people loyal to the regime and supportive of the border guards were allowed. But the Sperrzone wasn't fenced off. The actual border started with the Signalzaun, or signal fence. This fence was the first obstacle for anyone from East Germany who wanted to cross the border into West Germany. A chain link fence with barbed wires on top, cutting or moving it would trigger an alarm, although the guards found it often malfunctioned. The configuration of the border varied a bit, but by the end of the 1980s a fully upgraded border looked something like this with the signal fence 500 meters on the East German side of the border. You would find watchtowers, observation bunkers, a guard road, anti-vehicle trenches, guard dogs on dog runs, and the infamous control strip with unmarked landmines, which often killed wildlife that had somehow found its way into the control strip. On Google Maps today, you can still see where the border used to run between East and West Germany. The bridge closest to the 500 meter mark I could find was the iconic Sydney Harbour Bridge, nicknamed the Coat Hanger. A design for a suspension bridge won local engineer Norman Self the second prize of an apt 500 pounds. When a second competition was held, Self won that with the design for a steel cantilever bridge. But that bridge was never built. One Ernest Stowe even proposed a very unique three-span bridge in 1922 connecting Ball's Head, Miller's Point and Balmain with a tower hub on Goat Island. Eventually it was decided to model a more conventional bridge after New York City's Hellgate Bridge. A single steel arch bridge was cheaper and better suited for the expected loads, carrying trains, trams and cars across Sydney Bay. Construction began in 1926 and the bridge opened in 1932. Nowadays the bridge has 8 instead of 6 lanes of car traffic a pedestrian lane on the western side, a cycle lane on the eastern side, and two lanes of train traffic. The two westernmost car lanes used to be the tram lines instead, with the lanes that replaced them clearly different. Each topic covered in this video is related to geography in some way. Monte Alban saw whole hilltops flattened and massive temples built with primitive tools by people whose cultures were shaped by the environment they lived in. The West and East German border left its mark on not just the German people, but also the countryside. And the Sydney Harbour Bridge is famous worldwide and connected a city more directly. And 150,000 vehicles cross it every day. Stories like these from our world, its built environment and how humans have, are and will have shaped it is what Oddworld is about. Few worlds are touched by humans and ours is quite odd for just how much humans have done so. That's it for this little extra video. 
to enable the next phase of this YouTube channel, we'll need to hit a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch hours. So I've got my work cut out for me. Thanks to everyone who has subscribed so far. I'm very happy to be making these videos for you. Subscribe if you want more content like this, plus upcoming videos on maps and tutorials on how to make them. Become a patron at patreon.com slash sepvenombrink for previews, extras and more. Or buy one of my maps from svdb.shop. Thanks to my patrons for making this and my other work possible. And thank you for watching. Hope to see you around.